Hello, and welcome to another video. I'm going to talk about Warzone strategy just a little bit in this video. Obviously, it's commentary too. However, I'm not really going to go over what happens in game, uh, though there are some examples that I will use from the game. Uh, one thing that I want to tell you guys is that uh, player allocation is something very important. It's been covered many times by other people. Uh, I won't completely cover it here, but we'll get to see the basics of player allocation and how numbers advantage and whatnot really plays out. So in this situation, they have about six players that went mid, and our team, we had about four. To put that into perspective, we have two less players than they do. So that means they only have two people protecting their pylon. And since we only have four mid, that means we have two extra players somewhere, whether that's protecting our node or whether that's attacking their node. Doesn't really matter. Chances are it's probably attacking their node because we got their node. Now, this isn't inherently bad, um, but if people are going to stay mid and we're going to start losing because they have numbers advantage, somebody else needs to come mid to back us up. And the reason why is because the longer they're distracted here, the longer, uh, not the longer, but the bigger the chance is of actually keeping their node. We captured their node way too early, but it can work if we can keep them distracted from actually going and team fighting at their node. Uh, what we are doing here might seem really silly, like, oh, you're finding multiple people. Well, one, we're not getting away, and two, um, the fact that we're doing this is keeping these amount of players just for us two. Uh, not, not the greatest uh, situation for us, obviously, but an outnumbered situation, we can actually pull something off because we do have both nodes, and if they stay here for longer, the higher chance that we're going to keep that node over there. Now... What I've basically already learned from my team is that we give up immediately after just dying once. I want to express that, but it's not particularly the best thing to say to your team because you don't want it to upset them. But either way, I am annoyed enough because I get this map way too much and people play it completely wrong. And I want to express how them AFKing isn't actually helping. Majority of our team is at the other node, not fighting anybody. And you might think, oh, there's just only three here, and there's two there, and this is an even fight. Yeah, not for long. Uh, you'll see that there's a lot more than that. And it's not a terrible allocation. Thank God that we have a healer here. Otherwise, we would have lost our own node, by the way. Uh, without that healer, we'd 100% lose it. Um, so, in this situation, having so many people over um, committing to the other node is not helpful and if their team was a little bit more you know uh lucky i would say let's say the healer was over there on the other side you know defending um we would probably get wiped at our pylon because it's one they have numbers to vanish and two they have more damage so they'll just wipe us and bam we lose that note it's only because of the healer was actually there that we are able to keep that node a lot of people don't seem to know that because a lot of people have healers that will defend the node and or, you know, go to the enemy node and defend that node. For sometimes it, it's not terrible because sometimes the fight will be there, but unfortunately that's not how it really goes. Now our team after, I've said a couple of things because I'm a little annoyed, right? Because I hate seeing this map get played like this. We get more of a team fight on our node. Thankfully, they don't give up on our node. And this also forces our team to allocate more players to our node. So therefore it's more of a even fight. Now while they might have more damage than us, it does not matter. Um, we have enough damage to kill somebody flat out, so if we all hit the same target and CC the same target, we will kill them pretty much no matter what. So even with a situation where they can do more damage than us, we can still get things accomplished. Just like them, if they get discouraged because they died once and don't come back, which is what our team did in, in round one, obviously without you know, Stiggle and the other person taking the node, we probably would have um, basically conceded after that round one. So I am trying to showcase uh, two things at the same time. One, when it works, and two, when it doesn't work. Um, obviously it works in this video, that's why I'm posting it, because it's the best situation that you can come off with gameplay like this. Uh, which, I say gameplay like this, is um, not quite playing it completely right, but there are some things where 
they basically do it right. Much like right now. We finally have our pylon and we have a battle team fight roughly even. Um, again, even though they're doing more damage, it doesn't really matter, mostly because it doesn't take too much to, uh, you know, kill them because you can see seat damage is so high. Uh, so basically all we have to do is keep channeling our players into this node, whether they die or, you know, just continuously die. Just don't let them walk away off our node. Just keep coming back. I know dying in war zones really makes people upset nowadays. I don't know why. That's actually intentional. It's 8v8. You're not supposed to be able to survive forever. But going into um, every set for, I think this is round, round three, um, or round two. I think this is round three because we had uh, both pylons round one and then round two. Uh, the points are just so low because our team is uh, very against fighting and we're not getting as much kills as we normally would if we actually grouped up. Now, if we start grouping up, we actually like you know win this fight pretty heavily, and that's mainly because uh, giving us just even like a few seconds of numbers advantage, we're able to clear them a lot easier. Uh, we're intentionally ignoring the heals most of the time because one this is a commando healer, they have uh, pretty good defenses for survival. Uh, taking out a sage, for example, which has a lot of team control, especially control that's really good against what my uh, ability is. The sage unfortunately just has to die because that's just going to cause too many problems for one, me, and problems for other players on my team that don't have the ability to stay on target. To stay on target, excuse me. So that is why, you know, I dispatched the the sage. Um, it's not personal, it's not anything like that. It's just something that has to be done because the team control that's available on that class. Uh, a lot of people just don't know how to stay on target. So therefore, if you dispatch the problem that's preventing them from staying on target, the game just becomes way much, way much more easier. Um, I'm not necessarily always doing things for myself. When I play Warzones, I make targets off of uh, team survival. So if somebody really needs to die or somebody does a lot of damage or does a lot of control, usually I will target them first. Obviously, if they're a tank, I won't even bother. But if it's like a lightning sorcerer, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping on it because if it free casts, our ability to play drastically goes down, basically. So you can see that we are team fighting here. This is great. This is really what should, for the most part, be happening, and most likely at middle and not at our pylon. But because it's on our pylon, we actually have our players playing the game. Um, however, if um, we are at mid and they just refuse to you know, come mid. Uh, eventually we're just giving up one, orbs two, and we're also giving up kills mid. It's not particularly worth it, right? So I'm happy that they come to us. If they didn't come to us, this would be relatively a different match. I would definitely have to say, definitely a different match. But because they come to us, it gives us a chance to actually team fight and, you know, clear them slowly. Uh, there's not really too much to think about after this, you know, this phase of the game. People kind of know what they need to do. Just continue to protect our, our node, basically. Uh, since they're not really able to clear us, we can just continuously stop them. And as long as we get our node, we're good. And we also have the lead, so we can just keep doing the same thing that we did over and over. Now, it's really important, though, that we don't mess up player allocation, because if we do, will easily get wiped and they will take the node. But thankfully, again, we have a healer that's not going to enemy node, uh, which if they were, we would probably have a lot of problems. Uh, once this group of players, uh, which really four of them are playing together, to basically get control of the game or just roam together, and there's not a healer to respond to them, chances are our entire team is going to get constantly wiped by them. So in a way, Yes, avoiding them can be helpful, but when you have a healer, you probably shouldn't. Uh, in this situation, we still have our pylon, but we do have uh, a three versus two here, and there wasn't a, like two other warriors that were in there, but they've walked away by now. Um, so in this situation, we just don't have enough at our pylon to cap. Um, this is a player allocation issue. There shouldn't be anybody at their pylon, and there definitely is. 
or was, and that's why we didn't get our own pylon. But in this situation, uh, these guys can't really stop us from capping. We'll eventually get our own pylon. Whoever's there is one or two people, probably juggernauts. They have survivability when they have the defensives, but when they're gone, they don't last. So we get our pylon. Don't really have to worry about it. Uh, I want to keep these guys away from the pylon because the healer going to the pylon is going to make it much harder for us to get the, the cap. And if we don't get the cap, we're just screwed. Now, I may not be playing the objective, but I'm making the objective playable. A lot of people that just sit here and want to fight are making it possible for objective players to actually play the game. Nine times out of ten, most of the objective players are playing objectives against nobody. It's just like how people are, you know, in a pre-made and they're just fighting somebody that's undergeared and they're just constantly focusing him and basically making it so he can't play. It's literally the same concept. You're playing against somebody that can't defend himself. It's no different. We're not different. We're the same, like, thing. We're quite literally abusing players that don't know what they're doing. It's not exclusive. Um, obviously, with my recent uh, fixing matchmaking video, my ideal is obviously if that goes into play, pretty much everybody that wants to just fight are going to be able to play against other people that actually have gear. And the people that don't have gear are going to be playing against the people that don't really know how to play in the first place. But don't take it the wrong way. I'm not saying that objective players don't know how to play. I'm saying that they don't really know how to do combat, so therefore they can have an easier time playing the game. Anyway, hope you guys have a good rest of your day.